Hey, how's it going guys? My name's Daniel, aka Hashlips, and welcome to my channel. In today's video, I've got an exciting piece of knowledge I need to share with you. Now, recently I had some kind of question that I needed someone to fill in a form, and I needed to collect the data in a way for me to afterwards analyze it and use it. Now, for me, I didn't know what kind of software I'm going to use or method of collecting the data, but I soon realized that Google Forms are quite brilliant. This all started a few days ago where I needed to collect some information from developers that I need to join a project. I explained it over in this video over here. Now the responses I got from that was quite significant. It was over 600 requests from people wanting to be involved. Now the method I used there was Google Forms and I didn't realize how cool it really is and that's why I'm making a video on it. By the way, thank you for the 69,500 subscribers to this channel. If you haven't subscribed, give it a like and comment what you think I should do next. So why is this so important? Well, if you think about our daily lives in the digital world, sometimes you need to collect data. Whether it's for a school project, a kind of experiment that you're doing, in my case, I needed to reach out to my audience and know a few questions about them. There's different means and ways of getting that data. Like I said, Google Forms was the best option for me and it turned out great. I can show you afterwards the analytics and all these sorts of tools that Google gives you along with these forms. You can use this form in your NFT community to gather some data on your holders and maybe do some intuitive giveaways. Who knows? But instead of me talking about how great this is, let me go ahead and create a form to show you. Head over to Google Drive, sign in, and then go and click on this new button. Down here, you will see that there's a part saying Google Forms. When you click on that, a new form will be created for you and you can start editing it. So right off the bat, we get this purple design. It's designed in material, seeing that it's Google. And uh, we can go to this palette icon up here to just change the colors. You can add new colors over there. And I'm going to add this yellow, seeing that my logos are pink or yellow. So let's go with a yellow form. And you can also add a header image as well as change the font. Now, these are all decorative and you can play around with it. Let me get into how you build out the forms questions. So a few things I like to do right off the bat is just change the name. I'm going to change this into the, maybe the pets form. And I'm going to find out how many pets people have. Now you'll see here at the top, there's an email that's required and you can change this in the settings. If you go over here to the settings panel and you go over to responses, I believe, collect emails. So if you turn this off, uh, this form will not require emails uh, to be entered in, but it's good to have this ticked on because you most likely want to reach out to the people responding to the form, right? It all depends on your preference. Now, I haven't dived into all the other settings, so you can play around with that, but this is the basics. So just go back and then you'll see that this is there by default, but if it isn't, you can change it in the settings panel. For the title, you don't have to keep it the same as the one that you saved, so I'm just going to call this pet. And then in this description area, I'm just going to say that this is a form to see how many pets people have. And this is kind of a nice introduction to this form. You can also put some rules of your form in here whatever you like to do. Now to get to the questions, here we go. And this is the question one, you can see it's untitled question and it has this option one. As soon as you click on one of these panels, so you see if I click there, the control shift over here. If I click here, the control shift to this panel over here. And this is the question that we get to change. Now here right at the top, you can type out a new question. We can add our question. Maybe we want to know how many pets do you have? And as we can see, everything in here gets to be managed by you per question. So on a question basis, this is all the stuff you can add. So on the left hand side, bottom side here, you can add options. So if we had options like maybe, well, you have got one pet. We can add a new one and there's some suggestions, but we can add another option and maybe make it two. 
Google is smart enough to know that this is what we are doing right now. Or you can add the other option over here by clicking on it. You can always take questions away by clicking on the remove icon on them. And this is how you manage the answers that someone can give. Now, obviously with this question, this format doesn't really make sense unless you're going to list out a bunch of options for someone to choose from. What you can do instead is go to this multiple choice over here. This section is the format that these answers can be given in and the format of the question. So in my case, I think a short answer would be perfect. That way someone can just enter a short answer like I've got two pets or I've got one pet, whatever the case might be. Now you can also delete this question entirely or you can duplicate it and then you can carry on with it here. I'm just going to remove it for now. And then obviously you can also make this required, meaning that if someone sees the form, they're going to have to fill in this question. You can do a whole lot more by exploring these panel sections over here, maybe checking if you want to add a description and also response validation stuff. It's pretty crazy. I'm just going to simply add a new question and then make this question, maybe what types of pets do you have? In this case, here we can maybe say, well, I've got a dog, add a new option, I've got a cat, add a new option, I've got a turtle, whatever you want to do. But this is how you just lay out your questions one by one. And you can always click on one to remove it and play around with your form until you are happy. Keep in mind, if you share the link of this form to someone, you can still update it live if you made a mistake or something. So how do you share this form? Because now it's technically ready for someone to start filling it out. How do I share it with someone? So now we want to send it. And what you can do is click on the send button. And instead of sending it directly to someone's email, which you can do, you can also use social media. I usually click on this link icon over there. This gives you a link to your form and you can also shorten it if you so want to have a beautiful short link. You can copy this link and then open it in another browser tab. And let's go and do that and see what someone will see when they get to our form. Opening this in a new browser tab will give you this. This is how beautiful the form looks right now. And we can go ahead and fill it in. We can give it an email and then say how many pets do I have? Maybe I'll say I've got one. And what kind of pet do I have? I've got a cat. So now I can go ahead and submit this form. Once I do so, it will just say cool. Response have been recorded and that's about it. I believe you can also change this message. I'm not sure where to, but you can go ahead and explore that too. What I want to get to is if you move back to your form creation, you can see that this is always live and updated. Here on the responses panel, you can see that I've got one response. So if I click on that, I will be able to see my email and the response that I have received. What Google then does is this beautiful analytics on the answers given about your form. These charts usually differ depending on the type of data that you get. Now I'm going to show you an example of the form that I've placed out into the world and the data that I accumulated from that. Now that you know how to create your own forms, I'm going to share with you how my form turned out that I released about three days ago. I asked the question who wanted to be a part of my team building a metaverse and I needed different skill sets. The reality is that there's no possible way for me to gather information through YouTube and Discord in a proper way like this. As you can see, the responses were great. There's about 718 responses and it's still going up. Now, what type of questions did I include? Well, I wanted to know what skills people had front-end, back-end, or marketing experience, and even gave them the option to include another. I asked them the years of experience, and then also if they do have experience in the following. Then I asked them simply if they would like to be a part of the Hashlips team, yes, no, maybe, or in the future. And then I added a little section for any extra notes. Let's go and have a look at the responses that we got 
for the purpose of security and privacy, I'm not going to show people's email addresses, but simply the stats. Now on the responses tab, I just scrolled a bit down past the email section, but you can roughly see how many people are into front-end development out of the 718, which is roughly 396. How many people are back-end, 340. And then how many people are interested in marketing, which is roughly about 200, 199. We can see a clear definition over here, and then we get into these sub percentage values right below it. Now, the reason for that is because I add the option to allow another answer. And obviously people describe stuff differently, and that's why it's picked up on these, you know, uh, below 1% values, which is fine. I'm purely looking at this top chart over here. Then if we go down, let's look at the next question that uh, I asked. And that was how many years of experience do people have? What Google did was kind of give me this um, pie chart where I can now easily see how many people have zero to one years experience, which is this blue, how many people have one to two years, two to three years, and so on. We can see that a majority of people uh, actually have seven or more years experience, which is this green, uh, this green one over here, roughly about 151 people. Now, this is great information. This is actually superb because you now get to see the different skill levels. I get to see what kind of videos I want to make, what kind of videos will be beneficial to my community, and also construct a proper team for the metaverse we're going to build. For the next question, again, we get this bulk kind of stat up here and then lower values below it. And that's because I added that other option. But we can see that I asked what experience people had in the following fields. And most people are into web development. Next, there is blockchain development. A lot of people are into that. Game development and metaverse development. And then obviously marketing was suggested again by a few people. But this is very crucial. It means that I get to now pick out these skill sets from individuals who were explaining their projects. And obviously, I have another stage that I go through with another form uh, to get some more information so that we can set up a proper team. But this is great news. It also means to me that uh, the type of videos I get to make, if it goes towards web development, a lot of viewers would enjoy it. And YouTube does give you these stats, but I think if you do a form like this for your community, it's highly beneficial, you know, for you going forward in whatever you are pursuing, whether it's an NFT community, whether it's building out your own experience, a YouTube channel, whatever the case might be. Moving on to our last question, it was, would you like to be a part of the Hashups team? And when I saw the responses here, I was quite humbled by the fact that a lot of people would like to. In all honesty, the only amount of people who said no was about seven uh, individuals out of 718. That is crazy. It means people would like to be a part of my team. Unfortunately, we're not going to have this big team. You will be able to co contribute if you were one of the individuals who filled out this form. Thank you so much. And I've got some cool surprises for those individuals who did fill it out. Lastly, we've got the any notes. I cannot go on there because there's some personal links and stuff that people gave to me. But the, the point stands and I hope you can see the value of Google Forms. On the responses tab right at the top, there is a possibility for you to export everything in Excel. I cannot go and show you that because that's all uh, the emails and personal information that people have shared with me alone. So I cannot show that, but you can indeed export this as Excel filter through your options and find the correct individuals if this is the use case for your form. So I cannot stress how important tools like these are for productivity. So if you just discovered this and you liked it and you want to go and try it out, um, let me know in the comments if you have tried out Google Forms, if there's something that we do not know that we can learn as well from you. Um, but the fact stands that uh, this is something new to me. I started using it recently and it's wonderful. It absolutely works brilliant. And I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, leave me a thumbs up, uh, subscribe to this channel, and there's a lot more we're going to do this week. This week, we're actually going to be looking at Construct 3, 
an HTML game engine and I'm going to be showing you how to create games with not so much uh, code because I want people to have a result driven approach to game development. I hope to see you there and until next time have an amazing day. Cheers for now.